The challenge is that, or was, that the Institute had a, has a structure for learning and recognition, and theoretically, it starts off with the body of quality knowledge, BOQK. Um, from that, there's learning and development, which should come as a consequence of the content of the body of knowledge. And then, as a consequence of the learning and development, uh, people should get professional recognition. The idea was to break all of the learning up into little units, each unit covering a very specific topic, like people in quality is a topic, um, measurements is a topic, uh, quality improvement is a topic, quality management is a topic, and so on. I'll put, some of, I'll put them all up there in a minute. And um, so if they're in units and they're then submitted to them and they're written in the right way or in the way that they approve with the right words and the right language, um, once they've approved it, it then goes into a kind of national bank of units. So if you did a qualification, say, up in Edinburgh or somewhere and then moved down to London or Bournemouth and did a different qualification, they could actually track you through your unique student reference number to find that, well, you've already done this one, this one, and this one, so you only have to do these other ones. So it's better for you because you don't have to keep covering the same material in different qualifications, um, but it's also better for them if somebody's actually you know, paying for you to do it as well. Under the, if you look down to number four, there are something like 880 colleges in the UK and only around five of them, of the colleges, were actually offering CQI courses. And most of those were distance learning, not students going to the college. And only 11 um, service providers in total. The question was, why? Well, as part of the team, I actually had to go to a number of people I went to Society of Motor Manufacturers, Society of Aircraft Manufacturers, uh, Ministry of Defence, a number of individual companies, one of which was McLaren down at Woking, which was a, a fun day out. And I met all their different quality people and so on, and um, find out what they actually wanted out of quality education and training for their people. And the one thing that became very obvious very quickly, why weren't they putting pressure on the colleges to run these courses because uh, they weren't and they said because these courses don't meet our needs. The way they're structured is uh, inconvenient for what we actually want and um, the quality manager in McLaren particularly said that um, obviously when you make Formula One cars and stuff like that, if you make aircraft and other things, um, quality is absolutely paramount and just because they're not doing CQI courses doesn't mean to say they're not getting people trained in quality but what they were doing was working out their own syllabus and their own needs then they were hiring in consultants who probably couldn't even spell quality let alone know what it was and telling them this is what we want taught and then they were bringing these people in to teach them well these people they probably never even knew that CQI existed or the IQ, um, IQA as it was um, and um, got no connection or no interest. So the people did the courses, they probably weren't certificated. It might have met the needs of their particular immediate job, but it didn't actually connect them into the profession in any way. So they weren't getting this sort of continuous development because there was nothing to stimulate their continued interest. And so here we are with that current situation. Why is it that the colleges aren't doing it? The reason the colleges aren't doing it is because industry is not pushing them to do it and colleges will generally do what industry is pushing them to do. So the challenge, if you like, was to recreate or redevelop the um, education requirements in such a way that would make it attractive to industry and by being attractive to industry, industry would then start to put pressure on the colleges to deliver the courses. Now the quality management one is really the one where if you've done most of the modules or most of the units that I referred to in there, that um, you could then uh, apply for uh, doing the right units, the diploma in quality management. And from the diploma in quality management, if you become a member of the 
CQI, well, if you become a full member of the CQI, you could, after a period of experience and responsibility, become a chartered quality professional. There's a matrix on the back of the registration form, and on the back, what you'll see across the top are those certificates. So those read across the top of the matrix. And that first one is the level three certificate. That level three certificate is where an organization wants people to possibly, they're generally young but not always, um, to have a pretty good grounding in, in breadth and, and in depth to a certain extent in the quality sciences. They might be at a low level in their job in quality but they're gonna graduate upwards. Um, that certificate enables them to get their feet wet in all of the quality sciences and possibly then think about building a career in it. There's the different functions across. And then in terms of the qualification, the Diploma in Quality Management, which is nine of the units that are in those lower level. And then finally, eventually, the level seven, which is about um, post-degree standard, um, which um, has got a lot of the strategy in there. And you can imagine that the people that would do that certificate are the ones who are going to be involved in the strategic part of quality within a company, part of the board. Um, and um, so they would be at that kind of level. Now, there's the units that are on that sheet of paper. I've got the level seven units on there as well. Uh, that's as far as anybody's got with the level seven, only identifying what they're going to be but nobody's fleshed those out yet. Uh, on the level three, there's the audit one that I mentioned. People in quality, management system models, monitoring and measuring, quality management, and using quality to improve the business. Now, those are simple titles, but there's actually quite a lot of depth in all of them. And the level five units, um, there are, between those two, there are... Um, 18 altogether, and there's quite a variety of different types of project. In one qualification, you're actually required to produce a PowerPoint slide presentation um, covering the, like make your own teaching notes, if you like. You make the notes, you make the overhead PowerPoint slides and so forth. In another one, you're given a, a situation that could occur in anybody's company uh, and so you're, they're actually and you have to try and model that on supposing it had happened in the company you work for now. So you've got to look at these things in your own structure, in your own company. It only started in September, but what sort of feedback are we getting? Generally, the, all of the feedback um, from the people who we originally interviewed, um, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and people like that, MOD, etc., have been very, very positive in their response to it. 